All right, so today we're going to be reviewing some footage that got sent in from one of my Patreon members, uh, Ed. Okay, um, this is just a roll from his gym. Uh, I doubt they're taking it uber super seriously, but I'm going to review it like it's the finals at the Worlds. Okay, and we, like I said, we have a new mic going on. We got a little better camera set up. Um, we have this little nifty motherfucker that should hopefully allow me to be cut out and not be as annoying in the video. So, let's see what we have going on. It's a nogi round. Alright, so I know this is just in a gym setting, but I do want to talk about this real quick. Um, you're, a lot of people have a poor conception of what guard pulling should look like at a high level. Okay. Yes, if you want to play guard, you need to get to the ground as fast as possible, essentially. To not give up takedown points and not get put in a bad position because you tried to uh, wrestle back when you weren't a wrestler. All right? But the point isn't to get to the ground only. Okay, the really good guard pulls actually get you underneath the guy where they immediately get you into the guard you want to play and you're able to go on the offense from that guard immediately, okay? Um, good examples of this are Lucas Lepre gets a sweep off of like half of his guard pulls just from the, the, the way that he pulls guard into a guard, okay? You don't want to play open guard. You can't sweep people and do a lot from open guard. You can do some dummy sweep stuff, some blast doubles from your back and shit like that, but overall, you really want to get to a, an actual guard and get to an actual position, okay? So think of open guard as a transitional phase to a real guard. Right away, I like how he's on the head, okay? You can be using this to pull him forward. I like that he immediately went to the butterfly hook. It looks like he's going to transition to X guard, which is uh, exactly what I would do here. Okay, he didn't. All right, I think he was trying to stay in the arm there uh, when he wasn't going to butterfly sweep the guy. What he should have done is let go of the left side. He should have reached under the leg. And then I can use the cross uh, butterfly hook and I can use that arm that's under the leg to elevate him to a full X guard. And that would have been a sweep, especially with the fact that he can take that grip on the head and he can pull him forward and really offset the weight off that leg. So that's what I would have liked to see there. Okay, um, that guy did the right thing, just immediately getting to his feet. There was no reason to stay down in uh, any kind of butterfly hook situation. Okay, he didn't have the leg pummeling advantage there. He should have backed out or fixed his legs. Okay, at this point, that grip on the head is, uh, it's not helping you at this point. It's actually being detrimental. Um, really, you should let go. All right, wait, what the fuck do I even know? Okay, the guy got a little overzealous and you, were, you did a really good job tracking with those butterfly hooks. Um, Right now, uh, you need to just focus on passing the guy, okay? Because if you pass him, you're going to get out of the guillotine. If you let him clamp his legs in half guard or something like that, he can actually start to put some pressure. Um, really fun fact here. Okay, well, first I want to see how you're going to deal with this um, before I decide. Okay, so something you could have done, um, let's go back a second, is what I call overloading the frame, okay? Where that guy has a butterfly hook, okay? But because you have this good grip on the body and you're going to be able to, to really attach to him, especially with the fact that he's pulling you in already with that guillotine, you can just put a ridiculous amount of pressure onto the top of your hip here, okay? So when you go in, you don't actually backstep. You come in and through and try to get your thigh really close to the guy's body while putting all of your weight on it. And there's going to be a point where that butterfly hook just can't track you anymore, okay? So you overload the butterfly hook and you'll be able to pass him real easy off it. Um, instead, you got elevated and flicked out a little bit and now uh, you got out, but it could have got a little sketchy. Okay, um, there's absolutely no reason to just be on your knees in a jiu-jitsu match, okay? Someone that comes in on their knees, I know they, they can't pass me. It's, it's really not going to be possible because they can't change their angles. They don't have any explosiveness. Um, all of my ability to attach and lift and sit up and grab them and grab uh, cross tricep grips and stuff like that, it's going to be really, really high. You're really vulnerable to arm drags and butterfly sweeps and anything on the head. It's just not really where you want to be. What I would like to see you do here is, first off, make space between you and him. You know, Instead of grabbing his head there and pulling him in, actually push him away from you. Okay, You want to get him back onto his back. And you need to get, first off, you're even flat-footed. I would be on my toes at the very least, but you should jump to your feet, okay? And, if the, you know, with that in mind, you should already be trying to circle your feet in in some way. Like, I would be going to a headquarters position. Or at the very least, because he's sitting up to you. Something people don't realize is that, uh, especially Nogi, someone sitting up to you is really, really passable, okay? So I, I could start digging underhooks on this side right now, and I could start knee-slicing to the other side. But I'm going to have to get off my knees first. I would like to know what the move of the day is. 
Okay, so that was good. Uh, first off, that's the reason why you gotta get off your knees um, because he did have a chance to elevate you. He just didn't really use it very well. But you did a really good job uh, using your um, crossed feet down here to kind of pull your hips back down and not get elevated too far past him. So I did like that. But again, right, okay, right there, knee should be coming in. Okay, you should be going to headquarters immediately off of this. Okay, because right now he's giving you a lot, he gave you a lot of openings right there. Um, the fact that he's on his hand like this and the fact that he's reaching for your head like that means this whole other side of his body is exposed, okay? Um, again, um, it's gonna be hard for you to take advantage of it on your knees, but we, we shouldn't be on our knees, okay? We should be going headquarters. Uh, the thing is, because he's giving up that whole other side right now, it's gonna be really, really easy for you to pass around to that side, okay? But I would get him off my head first, all right? You could even do something like this. You could take that left arm and you could shoot into a body lock on this left side, take your right hand, grab his arm, and then feed it to the other hand that's coming around his back. And as long as he couldn't close a guard, which he shouldn't be able to do if you put this knee on top of his knee, you'll be able to just go straight through the guy. So there's a lot that could be happening here that's not. Um, this is getting sketchy. I don't want to see you get triangled here. Okay, that happened because you let him sit in your head and you stayed in your knees and... Uh, it's entirely what should happen if you're on your knees like that. Okay, this is getting sketchy. Um, a lot of that was just complacency in positions that you shouldn't feel safe in. You know, you shouldn't feel safe just chilling out there. We really should have been trying to get away. Um, I don't think this guy is going to hold Kesigatami on you for very long, now. Kesigatami is one of those positions I don't have a lot of respect for. Very few people can play it correctly, and the people that do play it correctly are stalling with it most of the time. We're trying to go for kind of gimmicky arm traps. Ooh. Okay. Did you get it? No. Okay. So here's what should have happened right there. All right. You're, you're pretty connected to the guy's back. Okay. I can't see what's going on with his right arm, but I think it's underneath his shoulder a little bit. So it's kind of like a seatbelt grip, right? So what should happen right here? You did a good job following him. You're just a little bit slow on this, okay? But as soon as that left leg came up over the body there and your weight starts to be able to support itself, you should be already putting this bottom hook in. This, this doesn't really want to sit there behind his legs like that. At the very least, you could take your knee and drive your knee in as a wedge and then start reaching around, maybe grabbing his hip instead. Um, that should have been a back chase. And if you know how to do crab rides from here, you didn't need to actually turn this into, oh, fuck, I need to come up. You could have kept chasing his back there. But getting on top is always a valid option, unless you're going to stay in your knees. I always get off your knees. Okay. So now we're in a knee shield. Uh, yeah, I would really like to see you uh, get him off your head there. The knee shield itself is not actually that hard to deal with. It's not a very good offensive guard. Um, it's not a very good defensive guard. It takes a little bit of complacency on people's parts to actually get swept or get leg locked or anything like that from those positions. Okay. So right now, um, like I said, you should be getting off your knees, okay? You should be getting him off your head right away. You just don't want to let people sit in your head like that. Uh, you want to punish them when they reach up for your head or you punish them when they get in their elbow, but we can't let them be in our head like this. But what you can do right now, okay, well, first off, get in your toes. Um, you can take this arm that's just chilling out right here, okay? Put it across his body right through this little wedge right here and just put it on the mat by his hips. Then you can start to walk yourself around to the outside, almost like a cartwheel, but it doesn't have to be super, super fast because your arm is actually going to be the wedge. You know, it's the reverse body lock stuff that I talk about in uh, No Gi Buzzsaw, okay? And that's going to let you safely transition around the knee shield. He won't be able to retract his legs because your arm is blocking it. You'll be able to go north-south. You'll be able to walk around to the other side or you'll be able to just pin him on this side with a body lock. And even if he catches you in half guard, you're fine. But definitely don't sit in this position. Okay, you're going the right way right now. I like it. Um, bro, look, he's giving you options right now. And right here. Okay, this guy has completely screwed himself without realizing it. Okay, he is still on your head, which is not good. And the fact that he has uh, your tricep grip there, like that arm might be just a little too close to the guy right now. If he was able to elevate you in any way, it would, it would feel bad. But I don't think he can from this angle. But what he did do is he actually turned his hips completely into you. And he has no frame whatsoever right now. All you have to do right now is take your knee back through the middle of his knees into a full leg weave, okay? Or you could take this knee around to the front and put it in front of his hips and you'll be able to windshiper and back step around to this side because this knee's a wedge now. He won't be able to follow you, okay? You could jump on this underhook up here and then bring your knee over the top and knee slice over the top of his hips or you can even bring your knee up and folding past him by putting it on the top of his knee line here and just kind of smashing him down using a... This hand, if you grab his head or grab his tricep, or if you could dig an underhook on any side, that would be your pressure. Uh, so there's really a lot you could do right now. 
Ooh, I wouldn't let him sit up to me like that and go for that Kimura grip. Um, right now, you should already be transitioning around behind the guy. This is your pass. He's giving you the pass. He's completely turned his hips away. Okay, now a few things right there. Let's go back. That was a back chase. Um, you should have, the second he wasn't kimura you anymore, you should have dove chest to back, okay? If you had dove chest to back right here, you could follow him through the roll. This bottom hook right here would already be sliding in, and you'd get a back chase off of that. Or, if you don't feel comfortable in how fast you'd have to do that and the timing required, or your back chasing mechanics aren't great, all you have to do is take this foot and winch wipe it on top of his leg right here, okay? So that way, when he rolls through, which is what he does, you would have been in a leg drag position, okay? And you could have taken your other arm across and caught that leg, and then you could have shelved his hip, kept chasing the back, or take side control, or take an arm triangle, okay? That would have worked out. Um, the other alternative was you just go through the middle when he opened his legs up and came down, and that would have worked out great. Yeah, that was pretty decent. Um, that's just you playing around, so it's no big deal. All right, I don't like how he's on your leg right here. Um, somebody doing this to me is someone that I think is going to kick over for um, like a, a leg lock entry of some kind, and that makes me nervous. So I would take this foot and hide it under his kneecap, and then he can't anymore. You'd have to peel it completely out, and that they're just going to elevate them up over your head because he'll completely collapse his shoulder here trying to do that. Um, you'll knock him over, and if he does try to fall back on a leg lock, he won't be able to leg lock you. You'll just come up. Okay, I don't know if going for his head here is the right option. Um, what I would do right here is get get this, control of his hip line right there, so you can control which way he goes. I would take this foot out and put it into a butterfly hook, and then I would try to drag him forward into a crab ride. And from that crab ride, I would probably turn him and come up into a leg drag, or I would start chasing his back. Yeah, turning into him like that, um, it, he, it, the way his hips were angled, he was going to be able to just get free here. And... Uh, Let's see, I don't like that he's going for a guillotine there. I don't think it's going to work out. Yep, we were able to come on top, so that was good. Um, if anyone on top is trying to guillotine you guys, go straight to Butterfly Guard because they won't have anything to arch against anymore. Chances are they'll sweep themselves and you'll be able to come up or you'll be able to safely from the Butterfly Guard peel your head out okay, and hand fight them. I have no commentary for what just happened. <laughs> All right, uh, good job with the Butterfly Hooks though. So right now, okay, you can easily strip through and go to single X or go to X guard and start knocking him over. You could even just probably just push him backwards, but he is on your head. I would probably start attacking this arm, though, because he really shouldn't be leaving that that extended. Hey, hey, there you go. You went for it. Right now, you need to corkscrew that hip up. Um, I know your foot is hooked behind his knee. I'm just not sure it will matter if you take your hips and just shoot them up to him as hard as you can before you turn belly down. Um, yeah, I was worried he was going to get away from that. But you still went for the right thing. Okay, he went for that guillotine again. You're doing a good job reactively using those butterfly hooks. All right here, grab something. Grab that tricep. When you grab it, use it. Pull it through and uh, we can start threatening something. All right, I see what you're gonna go for. Um, it looks like you're gonna try to do that uh, like, like hip bump corkscrew Z guard sweep, okay? Almost. Um, if you'd have had more pressure on his hips there, that would have worked better. Uh, but when that doesn't work, okay, so you can see at the point where he's really not going to fall over in the way you want, I usually actually turn and I front roll underneath him again, okay? And that lets me kind of almost chase their back or just continue with the momentum of the sweep without having to completely abandon everything I worked for. Underhook that arm. Underhook that arm and come up. Okay, he's on top, but uh, at this point, I have faith in your butterfly hooks. Yep, that was a good sweep. Right now, you want to be disconnecting from him. You don't really want to be down there anymore because now you're in his butterfly guard. Um, he's knee shielding you. That would be a good time for you to take that arm across into the reverse body lock and start walking around. You could also use this as your underhook and start threatening arm triangles. And you can use that underhook position to try to turn a knee slice out. Um, his legs are completely open. So right now you can actually just take this foot over here and then windshield wiper out. You could back step out. You could take your knee up, tripod up, and then turn a knee slice out. And you could also start walking him out because his legs are just open. Um, and that knee shield is not going to beat your underhook pressure. Okay, I don't really like that he was able to get up there. You had pretty good control. Um, stay in his hips. Stay behind his hips. Now go through. Go through. Go through. Nice. There we go. Um, that would have been better if you didn't stop, but you did the right thing right now. All you need to do is take this foot, bring your knee a little higher towards his butt, and then you can windshield wiper your foot to the inside right here. And at the same time, you can kind of sit through on your left knee and push 
his hips out of the way. Okay, and you get a really clean either windshield wiper through, or you can kind of uh, shoot your hip into his knee and then back step out. And it's, both of those are gonna be good options. I actually don't like that your hand is on the other side of his neck here though. A lot of people like to hug it like this. I don't think that's gonna be the best option. Um, I like to use generally my left arm actually, like I'm trying to leg drag you so that when you push back against me to open up, I can fling it past me. And at the same time, I would go through the middle and it's a very uh, clean pass, okay? Especially when they're trying to rely on their flexibility. Definitely don't wanna let's get the, let this guy get half guard though. Um, that I think was just you not trying, but again, right to your butterfly guard. Okay, uh, let's talk about your butterfly sleeps for a second because they're, they're, they're doing good and you're doing a good job. But something I think you should focus on a little bit is getting set up to him first before you commit to him. Okay, a lot of people try to do butterfly guard sweeps when they're flat on their back. And you really have to rely on power. Um, you really have to rely on your upper body connection and it's just gonna be harder if they're bigger, if the wrestlers have good base and good hips. So what you should be doing right now is you should actually lift him away from you. Let's go back a little because you took the butterfly hook out. Even with one butterfly hook, I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna, okay, you actually did a good job chopping that out, but I still would have pushed him away from me as I sat up, okay? Reattached to him, and then as I pull him on top of me, I'm gonna go for the sweep. That way I can get his weight off of himself so I can move someone that's a lot bigger than me. Okay, so that was a pretty fun round to watch. Um, the things that I think you should work on, um, you really have to break the habit of being on your knees, even in a flow roll. Um, there's absolutely nothing about it that is even remotely technically correct, okay? Instead of being on your knees, you could be in a combat stance, okay? Or you can learn how to stand up. A lot of people don't like to come in and pass standing up because it's high risk, high reward. You can get knocked off balance. The guys have more options to sweep you, to get under your legs and go to like single X, X guard, a lot of leg lock entries. But you also get the ability to change angles and come forward and uh, really kind of push the pace in a way you just can't on your knees, okay? I would advise also going back and learning how to do a little bit more of the headquarters position. And of course, I tell everyone this because I think it's one of the best nogi passing positions in general and that it just chains to a lot of high percentage nogi passes and there's just not very many of those out there okay we only have so many attachments we can do um there was a couple back chases that you could have got i think if you were a little more confident in your back chasing mechanics so something i tell everyone to do even if you're not a baron bolo guy go learn how to do a baron bolo and go learn how to do a crab ride okay because you don't have to use them for those purposes but the mechanics you're going to learn by getting good at those are going to allow you to chase the back from a lot of different angles that you know wouldn't necessarily think about which enables your guard passing because a lot of guard passes end up being back chases in a way that a lot of people just aren't aware of okay so that was fun guys if you want me to review your footage uh go ahead and join our discord okay and uh send me a request in the uh <laughs> rolling footage request area i'm very um you know good at naming things or you can hop on the patreon uh they're, they're both the same but i'm going to get to the patreon people first and they're going to kind of get the priority a little bit but you know i have fun doing this so you know if you don't want to if you just want me to you know review your thing just go ahead and send us a video and we'll get around to it when we can so uh otherwise guys remember this is really important it will help your jiu-jitsu um more than you know the guys doing all the acai and jesus it's uh eat your fucking panda express and that is all bye have a great time Guys, if you want to learn more about the techniques that we actually use, we have a lot of instructionals on BJJFanatics.com. If you guys just have too much money and want to throw some away to some sketchy causes, feel free to check out our Patreon. And if you guys want to just see some random shit that I'm not posting on YouTube, small videos, pictures, whatever, you can check out our Instagram.